Hey peeps, so we're back again, another weekend, another little task on the ML. So we're going to be doing the bricks today, and we've already started. I've got it jacked up. I must say this car is a pain to put on axle stands. So I've got the front axle stands on the front wishbone, and I've got the suspension jacked up to max. But the back, because it's so hard to get an axle stand safely on the arm there, I've just got it there on wooden blocks, which I'm not too pleased about. I'm going to make a better version of those later. Okay, so car's jacked up, ready to go. I've got the rear brakes here, ready to put in. And I've done a bit of prep already, so I've taken the torque screw out of the rotor and I've loosened off the bolts on the calipers. I'm going to be whipping those off. And then the one other thing I've done already is I've plugged in my MB2 and I have wound the handbrake, electric brake, electric part brake pistons in. So that's these motors here. And when you go through the software menu, I'll show you that later, you engage the disassembly mode or assembly mode and it winds the motor back, allowing the callip motor to be fully in so that when you push the pistons in, you can get the new pads in. Okay, next step, I'll be getting those rotors off and the calipers. Okay, so we've made a big mess, but we've got things happening. Got the new brake disc, got the old brake disc. I'm cleaning up the hub. Show you how I did that. And just about to compress the piston on the brake caliper. So now I'm gonna start reassembling. So the first thing is to put the caliper holder back on. Now I always grease the pins, I've just pulled the pin out, didn't look too bad, but just a bit of copper slip on there. So I've got my copper slip here, I'll show you that. So the copper anti seize grease, just a bit of that down the hole and put that back together. And then uh, put the bracket back on and I'll be putting some thread lock. So I've got some three bond onto those caliper bolts. The rest of the hub I've cleaned up, I've put some anti-rust or sorry rust um, buster so that's a, a uh, oxidizer for the rust uh, so reconvert it back from the rust sorry it's not an oxidizer it's the opposite and uh, let's clean the hub up and i'm going to give that another wire brush in a moment and get that nice and clean and then i've already compressed the piston on the caliper clean the caliper up a bit and we'll get the new pads back on and the new disc back on okay so we've got the disc back on got the caliper bracket just loosely. I'll just put in the one pad. Still got the caliper compressed. Now I'm just going to put in this brake sensor from the old unit. You can see it looked like that. You can see there the brake sensor fits down into the brake pad. I broke the wire off the old one. So the old one's there. Here's the new brake sensor. Just going to be plugging that in. This is one of the little spike and it's going to be going down inside the pad there. Okay, so the sensor, the hole in the pad was pretty tight, so I just cleaned it out with a, uh, the sensor 3mm, so I cleaned it out with a 3, and then just at the top a 3.2mm drill bit. So I'm just going to get that pad in. And I did debate whether to grease these, but I'm going to put them in dry. Some people do like to grease the ends of the pads. I think against that stainless steel, you're just playing with a bit of fire there, getting the grease near the disc. So uh, I'm going to go with dry, see how we go for squeal. Okay, so just showing you what you'll need uh, to do the brake discs at the back. So you're going to need probably a power tool with a wire brush, or just a manual wire brush, some anti-seize grease, a small Torx driver bit, um, that is a Torx 30. Uh, probably a little socket set um, with an 18 or 19 millimeter because it's a real pain to get the two carrier bolts out. Uh, a hammer to get the brake disc off, uh, hopefully, or preferably a rubber mallet. An 8mm to do the screw on the brake sensor. A 13mm to do the bolts on the caliper. A 17 to do the bolt at uh, the back of the caliper, sorry, the holding the caliper bolt from moving because it's a sliding bolt so it's loose. And an 18 to do the actual bolts on the uh, brake carrier bracket. Uh, some kind of pad compressor to push the pistons back in. Um, maybe a screwdriver to clean some stuff up. 
and then I used some rust converter, some degreaser, a bit of brake cleaner, some uh, thread lock and a bit of WD-40 to clean things up. Uh, and maybe some ear protection and some eye protection to keep yourself from getting hurt when you're doing that job and making the noise. Okay, so I've already done this one and I'm just going to go over the other side and get on with the other one. So I'll try and film some of that as we go. Okay, let's see how we go. Already loosened these ones off. the moment. Just gonna get This side there's no sense cable, so we don't have to worry about that. That's just compressing the brake pads a little bit. And we just try and get the caliper off. Just gotta wait for the fluid to go back in there. Second spanner on the spanner. Oh, we get a her again the right way. Whew, they're super tight there.
So, as mentioned before, I've undone this Torx, the Torx 30. That's loose. Should be able to get the disc off now. Him of some. Okay, last bit was quite violent, but we got there then. So now I'm going to clean up this um, hub and get rid of some of this rust. Okay, so this next step, I'm going to get some of this rust converter. Get that on there. That'll convert some of the iron oxide. That, by the way, is why your wheels stick to the hub sometimes, they rough. So while that's working away, I'm going to clean this back plate with some degreaser. As on the other side, I'm just going to put a bit of copper slip in the two bolt holes for the caliper bolts. Put those back on. Cleaned it up with a wire brush just before. I'm also going to clean up the caliper. This is a real mess. Lots and lots of brake dust on here. I'm wearing my mask while we're talking like this. Just get that cleaned up. Before we clean that up completely, I'm just going to screw the piston in using this piston compressor that I've got. And just when I get halfway through this, I'm going to go around and check the brake fluid isn't overflowing on the master cylinder. So I'll just go and check the master cylinder. Okay, master cylinder is okay, so just get that off. Just clean that up a bit more. Just to break that down on there. Okay. 
cabeza. Put some copper slip on the disc so very thin don't want to get this all flicking out onto the brake disc but it's just there to stop that corrosion from next time doesn't matter if I get some down the thread holes so just a nice thin layer all around and then shouldn't get any of that corrosion as we saw before Break the disc and get on there. So just lining up the little screw. In. Oh. Before I put that in, I did just forget to put some thread lock on that. with that, it's only a small little thing. Now the bracket goes back on. I like to put a bit of thread lock on the bolt holes and the bolts just to make sure we get some good stitch in there. Just put it on this first bolt. Get the bracket on. GoPro, stop recording. Okay, I've got the thread lock on the bolts now. Just get those back in. Okay, this side's much easier because there's no sensor. So we can get the pad holders back in. Top pad holder in, just get the bottom pad holder in. Check those are clear to the, the disc. Going nicely. Okay, on this caliper, the pad with the dot. I'll put the pad numbers up on the description a bit later. My calipers are different to most calipers because this is a non sport, non AMG. Let's get that one in. Okay. 
Okay. They're on. Just got to tighten the caliper bolts now. So again, same as before, just using two spanners to judge the torque. I can't get my torque wrench in there, so they're just going to be tight. That sounds good. Very tight, and they've got the thread lock on. Anyway, okay, caliper. Go back on over the new pads. It's a bit fiddly, you've got to put the top edge in first. Get it over the pads. And then, new bolts. Oh no, like this. The thread lock, the new bolts got the thread lock on anyway. new bolt in there I'll just get that tightened tightened up GoPro stop recording okay got those caliper bolts done up just about tight just finish them off Okay, should be all good, ready for a bit of a clean up and bleeding. Put the cable holders back together. Okay, he's ready to get to the bleed nipple, which under this cap to that shortly. Okay, so now it's to do the front wheel and the front brakes. These clips are very awkward. You have to push in these little tabs and get these clips out so that you can remove the brake pipes. Remove the brake pipe. Put that in there. Oh, there we go. Put that out of the way. Then you have to take these caps off here. Which just pull off the little plastic caps and they're covering up the caliper bolts. So the one of them hidden down the bottom there. Okay, then you have to get a caliper bolt spanner. This is a 11 millimeter, it's called a H11. And it goes in there and gets to the caliper bolts. And then, I'll just get those out. Once I've got those out, I'll squeeze the caliper off and get it over and just put it on the other side and show you taking the bracket off. Put bolts out and you might find it's a bit tricky to get the caliper itself off. So because I don't care about this brake disc, I'm just levering up on the brake disc by putting a screwdriver behind the pad and the brake disc. Just compress the piston a bit and allow the caliper to slide off. It's a very heavy caliper, 
so don't rest it on the brake pipe. But luckily that's got a really long brake pipe to get it out of the way. Okay, here's the old pads. They're really shot. The other one came off on the pistons. So they've got these springs which go in the back and you can see there they're pretty dead. Okay, there's that way. So now we'll get this bracket off. So I've taken out the rotor screw, the little Torx 30, and I've got a feeling you don't need to take the bracket off. But we'll find out. Let's see. Nope. Really close. But you do have to take the bracket off. Okay. Let's get that back on. And we'll get those bolts out. Okay, so the same as the back, I've got the bracket off. Those bolts are pretty tough, 21s. And I've got the rotor off. So now we can go about cleaning the hub up and cleaning those parts up and getting it back together. Same as before, the rust converter. There's a hole in my bottle, that's why. I don't take the cap off. Up. Because of the double piston on this brake caliper, luckily my tool still fits in but I'm just using the pad as a spreader and just screwing that in and I can't really do that one handed but you get the idea. Just pushing those pistons back in and just nipping up the top there and checking on the master cylinder level as we go. So as before, get the copper slip on the hub here. the disc can just sit there and even though I do a lot of pressure washing of these rims trying to keep the brake dust off them if the water gets behind even between the alloy and that steel there soon start a bit of rust going on even this copper slip will dry out over time need a bit of a clean up especially when you take the wheels off we got a bit too carried away there, but let's see how we go. All right, time to get the new disc back.
Okay, so let's get the bracket back on and then we'll get the caliper back on and the new pads in. I'll stop and film a bit of those as we go. Get these new pads on. The rear pads you have to put into the caliper. First on. Okay, calipers back on, tightened up the rearmost bolts, put the two caps back in to get the heads for bolts. Okay, should be better. Let's tighten up and get the clip back on. Okay, just clean up and time to clear the bricks. Okay, I'm well into this one just because I want to get finished for the day. So this little bolt is a Torx 8, but you can use an 8mm spanner. I do have the proper Torx drivers. That gets the sensor wire off, sensor connector. Just pull that connector out, it's just a straight pull. And that should take out the way then, so you don't get that damaged. And like on the other side now, the caliper should be ready to lift off. I've already got the caliper, uh, sorry, the um, pipes off, and as before, I'm just going to put the screwdriver behind the brake pad, ease it forward. Just getting that piston to go in a bit, get me some room to work on. If I wasn't doing this normally, I'd be putting the screwdriver between the pad and the caliper. I could still do that. Make it very easy, doesn't it? Even putting it in there. And this isn't a great screwdriver. It's better if I got my jemmy bar. That's the side gun in. The side gun in. Should never be loose to lift off. Just be careful of the sense cable. And there we go. Pad comes off with the sense cable. <coughs> lift that out of the way. Okay, same as the other side. I'm just going to get the Bracket off, get the disc off, get the new disc on, get the bracket back on, and then we'll get the sensor back in. We've got the pistons compressed fully in, we've got the bracket off, put the caliper out of the way, so we're going to get the disc off now. Let's see how this one comes off. Okay, there we go.
Yeah, just got the sensor back in. Pads ready to go back on. So the sensor goes with the wire towards the pads. Just the bracket now. Okay. So I was just kidding before when I wasn't talking. Just checking these are done up. Okay, just the bleeding to go now. So this is how I do the bleeding. So I've got my 11 mil spanner and a tube leading down into some very old brake fluid, a big pot, and we're gonna blow those bubbles out and then uh, get the new fluid be going in there. Okay. Down. Up. 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 Down, up, down, up, down, up, have a rest. Okay, I did the uh, left rear, then the right rear, then the left front, now the right front. So this is the last one. So if you look at the colour of the fluid coming through the pipe, you'll see it should be quite dark brown uh, to start with, and then lighten up as we get to the fresh fluid. Down. Up, down, 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 up. Have a rest. You can see that's got a lot lighter, that fluid, from the brown that it was before. I'll just do another couple. I'll just top the reservoir up, and then we'll do the last. I just had a bit more fluid left in the reservoir, so we just came back to this rear, left rear, and we're just gonna do this a bit more. The car's right-hand drive, so this is furthest from the master cylinder. Okay, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, have a rest. Okay, last job, just tightening up the wheel nuts. So I pre-torqued them to around maybe 100 newton meters, and now I'm tightening them to 150 newton meters, which is 110 pounds feet, near enough.
Okay, that's it. Okay. That's the end of a long day. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.